Coach, uh, obviously a, a disappointing showing in Arkansas. What was kind of your message to the team uh, in practice since then? You know, we had practice yesterday. Wednesday was off, and, uh, you know, we talked about the fact that, you know, we are where we are, and we've got to dig ourselves out of this hole that we're in in terms of a four-game losing streak in the conference. And you know, every game is so difficult because our league is so good. There's no easy game. Uh, and South Carolina's coming off a great win at Florida, their best win of the year. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've got to, you know, just keep battling, keep fighting. You have to fight when you're, you know, when you're down. you got to fight your way back out of it. And, uh, you know, we talked about that prior to practice yesterday and during practice. And, um, you know, our guys had a good practice yesterday. So I was pleased with that. Paul, did you have a follow-up or are you good? Yeah. Yeah, I got another one. Coach, you, you've mentioned in the past couple of weeks about turnovers being the main issue that you're trying to drive home and correct. What can the guys do to, to – you mentioned the double teams have been giving them problems. What's what's the key to success there? Is it just repetition or focus or your thoughts on that? You know, really when you look at the turnovers against Tennessee and Alabama, it had nothing to do with double teams. This had to do with poor decision making. This last game, you know, they ran at Iverson or Davon or DJ to get out of his hands off of a specific player and saying, hey, we're not going to guard you. And that guy has to be able to handle the ball better. And uh, uh, so it's something that, you know, we've talked about. We watched the film, we watched the edits yesterday. And I thought that when we got down, there were times uh, offensively where we were really rushed. For example, in the second half against Arkansas, only two times did we pass the ball four times or more. That's not enough patience. That's getting sped up. And uh, you've got to be able to you know, handle the pressure and not get sped up to where you're playing faster than you're capable of playing. We'll swing it up to Columbus and John Sokoloff for a couple. John, go ahead. And you, you kind of touched on it right there with kind of the, the quick possessions, but what else kind of is it offensively that you guys want to obviously see get better at uh, along with that? I think you guys are 11th in the conference in, in points per game. What are you kind of working on to try to up those offensive numbers and, and obviously you know improve the offense? You know, it's not so much uh, points per game, John, that I worry about because – you know, we're also among the top in terms of defensive or, or defensive points allowed per game as, say, Tennessee or, you know, Ole Miss. You look at where they are, same thing. The teams that are not scoring the most also have the best numbers in terms of allowing the least. So that it, it, it's more about your shooting percentages and, uh, you know, the ability to make open shots when you have them. And uh, that's something that, you know, we've got to continue to, to try to solve and get better. We've got to get the, the foul line more. You know, we got there 18 times in the last game and it didn't shoot it well, 10 for 18. And, you know, we had chances. You, know, we, we, you got to remember, we were up 16 to 2 in this game. We were up 16 to 2, really had the game going the right way and uh, had the ball three times in a row up 14 to 2 and took three, you know, questionable shots in a row. We've just got to be more mature and 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 understanding of time and score. And you always talk about that with the team as a coach is, you know, always understanding time and score, time and score, time and score. So that you're taking, you know, good high percentage shots. And uh I I thought that uh you know, we had some guys that uh you know, did a good job of moving the ball. There was one uh, point during the game where we had Quinton, Javion Davis, Davon, and uh, I, I think it was uh, Cameron or Derek was in there, and that's when we made our run, I and mean, that's when we actually built on that lead. So, uh, you know, we've got to continue to just move the ball and share the ball and take the open shot when it's there. And uh, at what point do you kind of, 
Uh, I mean, is this another thing where I, I know making the, the open shot when it's there, as you just mentioned, but do you kind of want to see more out of your, your kind of like star players, your star power backcourt in the sense of like the Iversons and DJs just to kind of help get this team on track as well? Well, you know, we want them to take more shots than they did in the last game, especially Iverson. He only took four shots. And a part of that was he's getting double teamed all the time. But as a point guard, a lot of times, you know, you've got to be able to drive in there and distribute the ball to open players. And, uh, you know, we uh, have got to continue to demand that out of him. I thought he had a really good practice yesterday doing just that. And it hurt us in the last game that Davon got in foul trouble. You know, he fouled out in 17 minutes of play. And uh, that was a critical thing, especially against a team that's trying to press you and trap you. He did the best job of anybody on our team as a guard position to handle the double team and just go around it. And uh, him getting in foul trouble was a real problem for us. And something that happened with both of them. And, you know, we, we got into a situation where both Iverson and Davon were in foul trouble in the first half. We'll swing it over to Joel Coleman. Joel, go ahead. Ben, sometimes it seems like uh, Frank's teams kind of get better as the year goes along. I'm just curious what you've seen out of South Carolina so far and uh, the, the things they do well and the things y'all have to do well on Saturday. You know, they're a completely different team, Joel, than what they've been in the past from the standpoint that they've always been, you know, a power-oriented, get the ball inside to Kosar, get the ball inside to Silva, play inside out. Now they're playing four guards around one big, and sometimes they'll even play five guards. So, like, Bryant comes off the bench. Bryant is the maybe the most athletic guy in the SEC. I mean, he is an absolute freak athlete who's having a great year. Uh, and this is on a team that's been to two pauses, two or three pauses. I mean, we played more games in conference than they played in the year. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're a team that's obviously uh, coming together right now. They had a good win against Georgia at home. They had a bad loss against Vanderbilt on the road. They had a, the best win of the year at Florida uh, on Tuesday night. And then we have them there at their place tomorrow. So they're definitely uh, coming off uh, a high point of the season to beat a nationally ranked team uh, on the road like Florida was a great win. And, uh, you know, we're going to have our hands full because they're going to have a lot of confidence coming into this game. But Maniah starts at the four. He's really a three-man who plays the four. And so it's, it's going to be a, a matchup, you know, for us where, you know, we're going to have Tolu guarding, you know, perimeter players as a, as a power forward and uh, being put into switches and situations where, you know, we're going to have to handle that. We'll swing it back where we started and go back to Paul Jones. Paul? Coach, obviously, you, you threw Derek Fountain in there at Arkansas, and, and he didn't. It looked like he, it wasn't too big of a moment for him. He was he was ready to shoot and score. What did you think about his most extended minutes in SEC play and how he handled that? Paul, his only minutes in SEC play. <laughs> As I was looking at the stats, but he's going to play more minutes for us. Uh, you know, we, I've been talking about that for the last two weeks. Because it gives you a blend of a guy who can make a shot and also defend. And he's pretty good offensively in terms of passing the ball and making plays for others. He's got a lot of good skills. You know, he's a kid that came in here at 202 pounds, and now he weighs 220 pounds. He turned 18 this summer. Uh, so he was, you know, he's young. Uh, and I've really been pleased with his development. He loves the game. Spends a ton of time watching film, asking questions of the assistant coaches. He's a great kid, and he has a very bright future. And he's a kid I like because he can play multiple positions. He can play the small forward or the stretch four power forward position. And he, you know, especially with him putting enough weight on to fight, you know, bigger players down there uh, moving forward. I think he'll end up being 225 pounds a year from now. And, uh, so I'm very excited about him and, and uh, thought he did a good job for us when he got in the other day. And he was in the game when we cut the game to five points in the second half after falling behind by 16. You know, and he uh, did some really good things, instead of, including hitting the three to cut it to five. 